The struggles of cable news in the post-Trump era are extremely real. Um, this number is actually shocking. Let's throw this up on the screen. CNN has lost almost half of its primetime audience in the past five weeks. So basically from January when you had the Capitol riots mm -hmm. and you had impeachment and you had all of this going on, um, they still were riding high. Now in February in primetime, they've lost half almost of their audience. MSNBC right behind them losing a quarter of their audience. Yep. Fox News between January and February hasn't changed all that much, but they saw their big drop in off. In November. In November, so they shouldn't be left off, mm -hmm. off of this conversation either. It's so bad the Washington Post is actually writing <laughs> about this as well. Um, big piece about not only cable news ratings, but also the traffic to major news websites, and they report on the problems at the Washington Post. So the Post between January and February, they've seen traffic decline also by a quarter. Yeah, 26 percent. 26 percent. In a single month. Fewer visitors yeah. from January to February. They also show the way that um, many of these news outlets and cable news have just, it was just a bonanza during the Trump era. So the New York Times, over the course of Trump's presidency, they went from having 3 million paid subscribers to 7.5 mm -hmm. million paid subscribers. So Trump, as much as they love to decry him, as much as they love to hate him, he was amazing for their bottom line. Yeah, and he was. And actually, they note the New York Times actually lost 17% of its traffic compared with January and 16% over last February which is a huge drop for all of them. This is an existential threat to a lot of their business models. And when you see them clamoring and trying to make you know, something else into a national crisis or into ratings, you should wonder why. Mm -hmm. Whenever they try to latch on to Marjorie Taylor Greene and then spin this up into a whole thing, what are they doing? You think they care about Marjorie Taylor Greene? No, they don't care about Marjorie Taylor Greene. They care about ratings. And they're trying so desperately. Brian Stelter was like, Tucker Carlson is the new Trump or whatever. I'm like, mm -hmm. dude, you want him to be the new Trump because Trump was the greatest thing that ever happened to you. And it's the same thing. I'm dying saw, for anyone to be a new Trump. I saw Oliver Darcy, the CNN media reporter, like literally being like, declaring war on Fox, like watching their programming. Fox is reporting on CNN's programming. Like I said, best, of, you know, Iran-Iraq war, I wish you all <laughs> the best of luck. I hope you destroy each other and it's better for the country. And it really just goes to show that this entire thing was a sham. All of this attack on the press, et cetera, sure, the rhetoric was there, but he is the greatest thing that ever happened to them. And they knew it at the time, and they're screwed. They don't know what they're doing. The Huffington Post had to lay off all of these people. People are cutting jobs. It's a dying industry in many respects. Well, at least in the establishment realm. Mm -hmm. And in the independent realm, Substack, et cetera, is booming. Right. And what's happening? Now they are setting their sights on Substack. They are declaring outright war against independent journalists and anybody who has a and dissident podcasts. view and oh podcast is right for misinformation. Yes. Um, this is their this is what they have to do. They have to protect themselves That's, um, at this point. You're so right to describe it as an existential yeah. threat because most of these outlets, whether they were on the right or on the on the mm -hmm. left or liberal, they formed their entire identity around this one person. So, and people, their, their viewers or listeners or readers, they formed their identity around yeah. resistance to this one person. And you had within the Biden campaign pledge, like basically you're not gonna have to care about politics anymore. You can go back to whatever you were mm -hmm. doing, like blissfully unaware of whatever's going on in DC that actually is having tremendous consequences on your neighborhood and your lives. But that was the promise is basically, you're not gonna have to get the news alerts anymore. You're not gonna have to tune into Rachel Maddow every night at 9 p.m. Right. You're not gonna have to do these things. And that's the other piece is that they built this conception that just by watching their terrible programs, you were somehow resisting. Yeah, you were fighting back. Like you were part of the mm -hmm. solution because you were watching their terrible, trashy, predictable, partisan hackery, and that this was like a, a way of being an activist. And now they don't have, there are plenty of critiques of Joe Biden. There are plenty of like, the idea that he's boring is only based on this sort of like ephemeral, shallow personality politics. There's plenty in the world that's interesting that's happening right now. We don't mm -hmm. have any trouble finding it, but they have no real critique or no real focus on policy and they haven't trained their audience to have that either. So yeah, they're kind of SOL. It really is. So sad. Tomorrow on Rising. Let's see it.
<laughs> this is the Bad Faith Podcast. Brianna Joy Gray joins us. And the New York Times' Jane Koston. She's going to give us her take on the GOP's minimum wage and labor. Remember to hit the subscribe button. You don't miss any of our videos. Don't forget to like and share as well. And we will see you all tomorrow. Have a good one, guys.